Hey guys, welcome back to Surveying with Robert. Uh, this is Trimble Dimensions 2024. I'm here with Justin. Justin does the uh, mobile mapping, and we have this awesome toy, this Cybertruck, with a MX-60 mounted on it. Um, so I thought we'd talk to Justin a little bit about, um, you know, kind of tell us a little bit. Is, is there any kind of story behind this? This, yeah. this is freaking awesome. So this is the latest and greatest development in Trimble mobile mapping, and we're getting roughly 3.6 million points per second, you know, overall. So Three. it's crap. 3.6 million, million points Holy per crap. second. So it's an incredible amount of data that you're getting on the uh, yeah. full 360, right? And now we've also implemented this backward down facing camera into every system. So we can start to open up the door to new applications and feature extraction like, like pavement analysis and IRI tools and stuff, international roughness index to, to determine yeah. the smoothness of the road. And historically, there's kind of an optional component that wasn't really well utilized on the extraction side, mm -hmm. but now we're really expanding our tools in Trimble Business Center to account for all of these things. Really? So pavement inspection. So uh, wouldn't years past, didn't they use like a photograph or something like that to yep. run down the road? And it was for like payment bonus kind of thing? Exactly. So this takes it to the next level. It will. And not only are you getting the payment information, but you're going to get every other asset as well, right? So you're getting everything above ground, all the assets, and then everything on the pavement too. So it kind of adds way more context to these data sets so than just these dedicated pavement you're scanners. The top of the power line, right? Everything. All the way down to the striping on the pavement. Everything essentially you can see from the vehicle, right? It's still line of sight with these yeah. LiDAR systems. So yeah. everything you can see you from know, the vehicle, that's, you'll that's be collecting. You know, something I think is funny because a lot of people think LiDAR, I think they think it's X-ray. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't quite truly penetrate anything yet. No. Although no. you will get a lot of information in between vegetation and stuff, not because it's truly penetrating through the leaves, but it's because the, the point cloud is so dense. There's so many points that you're getting through every little nook and cranny yeah, that you possibly yeah. can that's, to get that's that kind of elevation. That's the deal with the, with the uh, uh, aerial as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're flying over, you get that that penetration. So exactly. yeah, this, um, so how fast can you drive to mapping this thing effectively? So there is no top speed limit. But I will say that the, low, the slower you go, the more dense the point cloud will be. Yeah. So I would say it depends on what your overall deliverable is. Well, would I you think say like it's a good number? Good rule of thumb is probably 50 miles an hour or so. So at 50 miles an hour, I'm picking up 3.6 million points per second. Yep, you'll be capturing everything, including like mile markers and stuff on the side of the road here. And, mailboxes. Uh, yeah, mailboxes. Whatever, right? and all, yep. I call that accidental data, right? Exactly. Holy crap, driveways, just um, signals, islands. The, the things you can pick up is amazing. It's so, um, so mounted on a Cybertruck. Yes, yeah, so this was a new you know addition here this year. And so somebody said, "Wow, yeah. I got an idea!" All right, <laughs> something you had to catch some eyes. But also, again, these uh, elect electric vehicles are becoming more ubiquitous. So yeah. it's important for us to see like the power draw from the system and how it affects the overall runtime of the vehicle. So being you able want to, to power off the. You can <laughs> you essentially. Know, I had can. thought about that you because. Can. You know, uh, like I deal with the Corps of Engineers, a few other people, and they have like a generator or batteries and stuff. You're actually pulling power from the Cybertruck. You can, yeah, absolutely. And that. you can even track it in some of the metrics in the vehicle, uh, how much power it's pulling, how that it affects your overall drive time. Yeah. Um, and you can see it, you know, the Tesla has a big old touch screen right in the front oh, there, yeah. and you can actually operate the, the MX systems right through that. So. You can operate the system. <laughs> Wait a minute. As long so as I there's can, a Wi-Fi connectivity, you can. You can, can connect operate. up and and control this from the touchscreen. Okay. Because yep. essentially, so, all you need is a web browser, right? You need okay, a Wi-Fi so connection and a web browser. A hundred grand for this. <laughs> yeah. What am I paying for the MX60? It depends. Uh, we have uh, three different MX60 systems now. Okay. That range I'm, roughly. I'm the best one. Yeah, roughly from like 250 to 400. 250 to 400? Yeah, so 250 so five, on the low end, 400 So I'm looking at 500 grand and I am sporting around in a, in yeah. a cyber truck. And imagine we get to a time where it's full autonomous too, right? Autonomous driving where you just maybe upload a KML map of what you want collected and so, it'll go drive it for you. <laughs> so instead of handing a field book to a surveyor, you're going to just push a button and this thing's going to go do the project, right? One day. That's a little forward looking. We're not quite there yet. But yeah, that's, that uh, would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, wow. I did a presentation here a while back and uh, some about replacing people with technology, right? Because it's getting so hard to fill those positions. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first things that I, uh, this, I think it was the second slide I had in PowerPoint was a, was a Tesla robot. And I'm like, <laughs> nice. one of these days, coming. that sucker's gonna be cutting brush free, boys. Yep. It is so, coming. Yeah. And yeah. also though, it's exciting too, is this whole data fusion idea, right? Yeah. Where now it's, this is only a tool for the toolbox. It doesn't quite do everything quite yet. So being able to combine this with static scans, with UAV data, aerial photogrammetry, you know, conventional survey, we can now bring all of this in TBC and start making some, some analysis and some of this feature extraction based on all of the data, not just mobile mapping, Trimble mobile mapping alone. 
So, so this, I say if you've got to actually go old school and cross section, save the bottom of the ditch, right? Mm -hmm. So you just add that data in and you roll. Exactly. And I think that's going to be important going forward to for those that don't only use Trimble equipment, but have a variety of different manufacturers and brands yeah. in their arsenal. Now we kind of incorporate all of that in the Trimble business center. So trying to expand the versatility and the usefulness of these systems across the board. Wow, 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 wow. What, our business center already just fascinates me. You know, I took, uh, the only class I've had on business center was 1.0. And where we're at now in business center is just, I just did a, an hour long uh, lab class on, you know, fixing errors. Mm -hmm. And the errors that I was showing them is stuff that I would never <laughs> conceived you know, yeah. 20, 30 years ago. So, you know, that I wouldn't even have been able to collect the data, much less trying to fix the data. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it, it's just crazy. And I can only imagine where we're going to be another 20, 30 years from here, right? Retire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 exactly. But again, these tools are only going to get better and better. And your your fundamental knowledge set, I think, or your, your knowledge base is going to be incredibly important for even the future surveyors that are using this type of equipment. Yeah. I think a lot of people are losing track of the fundamentals which is incredibly important when you're going through these data sets. And again, even the errors are starting to analyze. Mm -hmm. These tools enable you to do more with less, no, with less knowledge, less experience. But if you do have that foundation, you're just going to be even more empowered to do incredible things with this technology. Wow, that is amazing. So it's getting 360 degree images at the same yep. time. So we do that have the Ladybug 6 up top as well. That I remember on some of the other It systems. is, it's a little beefier now. Ladybug yeah. 6 is pretty beefy. And getting 72 megapixels total, so about 12 megapixels per frame. And that's more for like full, complete, contextual, you know, imagery of like your your area, yeah. your project area. And then <laughs> we, on the MX90, we do have the forward-looking cameras as well that yeah. are better, you know, higher resolution for identifying assets. So now, if you could just if you could just access the cameras on the Tesla as well. Well, Same that, time. there you go. Cool? I like where yeah, like yeah. where your head's at. Yeah. Start to incorporate all these things all, together. Right? All that around it, right? So yeah, that would be awesome. Well, cool. And cool. also, one thing I'm pushing for, but also some of our customers are doing on their own, are these third-party, you know, accessories. So higher resolution cameras, thermal imagery, GPR, like, uh, ground you know, picture we radar. We worked on the um, which one was it? Phase one cameras. Yep, exactly. And grading those. 150 stuff. megapixel cameras yeah. as an accessory. As an accessory. Uh, so imagine reading a poll tag from a mile away. You know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and while you're doing yeah, 50 miles there. an hour down the road. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. so cool. Well, good deal. Well, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, um, no problem at all. Great information. Thanks and, for uh, having me. And we're excited about the new release of the 60 here, but also there's big things coming on the software side too. So yeah. definitely uh, keep in touch. And we'll keep your it. audience in tune. And we'll if they ever it. have any any questions, feel free to reach out. Awesome, dude. I appreciate it. No problem at all. Thanks.